thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you so very much. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it great to be in the house of God? Amen. Yeah. 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 Worship God. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 14. And we're going to read a little bit from 14 and some from 15. And we're going to go to Matthew, chapter 15, from there. And uh, I know we're going to be reading a little bit of scripture here. Hebrews 11, 13 through 16 also. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus chapter 14. And we're going to start verse 31, which is the very last verse in that chapter. We'll go to chapter 15 and we'll read a few verses from there as well. And I want to uh, I want to speak to you today and uh, just feel it in the Holy Ghost. And since the beginning of the year, there's been in some things that God has been dealing with His church in regards to. And uh, at least for myself, and I think for some of the things that I've preached and felt of God has preached, it's brought us to a place of examining ourselves, our walk with God, our excitement, our zeal, or our uh, discipline, if you would, in, in being everything that God wants us to be. Now, just so you understand, the discipline itself is not spirituality. All the discipline does for you is provide a mold that God can shape you. If you don't have discipline in your life, God cannot shape you. And if you want proof of that, you can just go to Scripture, go to Peter, where he talks about adding to your diligence, and he adds seven or eight different things onto that. And in so doing, the Bible says that we will, of course, acquire uh, something that is spiritual. We have a hard time being spiritual. The reason we have a hard time being spiritual is because we're so human. And the, uh, the attempt on our part to acquire some sort of spirituality, we sometimes don't know the way, we don't know how, and some of it seems, oh, just to be perfectly blatant with you, seems awful silly at times. Some of the things that we do in Pentecost, just, you know, and, and as in regards to Scripture, uh, just to some of us just seem like, well, that's just a little weird. That's just a little strange. So I want to talk to you today, and, and uh, uh, you may wonder why God would give me such a message when it seems like we've had such a great worship and praise time at the beginning of service. But I know for one thing, for certain, that that there are those that have made that decision and determination that they're going to worship God in God. Circumstances in their situation. And some people find it difficult to move into that realm because of either circumstances, situation, or maybe unbelief, or the feeling like they're going to do it their own way. So I want to help us today with the help of God. Amen. Amen. To understand how we can experience the supernatural in our lives. Amen. And I want to experience the supernatural Amen. in my lives. Amen. Exodus 14, and uh, let's start with, with verse 31, and then we're going to go up to 15, verses 1 and 2, and then we'll drop down to verses 20 and 21. And I want to preach to you on the subject of the simplicity of worship. The simplicity of worship. And uh, the Bible says this, And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And of course, those things are tied together. I'm not going to preach to you about that today, but you can just mark it down somewhere in your mind and your heart. And God will speak to you about it. And then verse, uh, chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. Now, if you're all waiting for me to lead you in song... <laughs> Yes, yeah. yeah, do it. And uh, you're going to be sadly misled, at least melodically, if that's a word. I'm not going to be able to keep you on course, but I can bring up some others that could do so. <laughs> Amen. But Moses sang, and the children of Israel sang this song and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Amen. The horse and his 
rider has he thrown in the sea? The Lord is a call. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. Just so you understand what that habitation is, it's not this building that we're in, it's this. I will prepare this so that God will inhabit it. chapter, and Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances, and Miriam answered them, said, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously, the horse and the rider hath he thrown into the sea. I want you to notice something. It began with their leadership. Right then. But it did not stop there. Amen. Everybody was involved in worship. Amen. Now, let's turn over, if you would, to Matthew chapter 15. And verses 29 through 31. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. And cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. What a simple statement, isn't it? Yeah. But my goodness, what a miracle must have been done on that hillside yeah. that day. Yeah. Those little few words just, man, they just kind of jump out at you and think, how many people did they bring to him? Yeah. Yeah. How many lame people were walking that day? How many blind people were seeing that day? Yeah. How many lepers were cleansed? How many of those that were maimed and, and disfigured were made whole on that day? How many people on that hillside? The Bible, in another passage of Scripture, the parallel passage to this, explains that Jesus was up there for three days. Never preached. Never, never, there are no sermons recorded. No words recorded other than the fact that he touched those that were deaf and he says, here. Right. Here. He touched the lepers and said, be clean. Yeah. And, and all of those that were there that he healed, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed main to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. And you'll notice that both these passages of Scripture that I've read to you today have to do with worshiping God. And the last passage, which you're just going to have to hold in the back of your heart until the end of this message, comes from Hebrews chapter 11, if I got that right, and verse 13 through 16. And these all died in the faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they had come out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Don't you just love this? So many times we think God's up there with a big hammer ready to beat on us. This, this scripture tells us that if we have in our heart and mind that we're looking for a different country, a different habitation for ourselves than the one we're living in on this earth, God's never going to be ashamed of us. Because you see, that country will be foremost in our hearts and minds. Now they desire a better country that is in heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Lord, we just love and appreciate you so much. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that we have felt in this service. Thank you, Jesus, for the freedom in the Holy Ghost to be able to dance before you and run and to shout before you. Lift up our voices in praise and in worship, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity not only to be able to do this, but to be able to do this in the company of those that are of like precious faith that want to do and to worship you in the same way. 
not only in the company of those that are here that I see, but also in the company innumerable to mention, Lord, today, of those that are witnesses today of our worship and our praise, of the angels that worship together with us and cry holy from the various sides of heaven and respond to each other on the other side by saying holy, 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 Lord, you are the God of all universe. You are the God that has created us. You are the God that has made us. And you are the God that has saved us. Thank you for the opportunity today to worship and praise you. Lord, for those that may be questioning within themselves, Lord, the ability to be able to worship you today, maybe because the enemy has spoken to them and told them that they're not worthy, that it's only for those that have achieved a certain place in living for you. God, I pray that you will show them by your word today that through worship and praise, God, you can change their lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if at any time during this message you feel like you'd like to worship and praise God, feel free to do so. Amen. 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 If you'd just you'd like to say amen to something that touches your heart and soul, don't let fear hold you back. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about what the person beside you, behind you, around you, in front of you may think. Just say amen. Worship God. Hallelujah. If you feel like running, run. If you feel like dancing, dance. If you feel like weeping, then you should weep before God. Do not quench the Spirit of God that moves upon you today. Quench not the Spirit, for it is by His Spirit alone that we will have power and strength to, to do the things that God requires of us and asks of us in this generation that we are living in. Amen. Just some things that, that have been said to me in the last little while. Uh, Sister Ann sent me some, some stuff, and, and one of them she sent me was a, a uh, devotional this morning that I arrived at, that I arrived at, pardon me, on my Blackberry this morning, so I was reading that this morning, and, and just, just so much of it applied. But let me tell you something. God it will deal with us through a multitude of different things in our life. God will speak to you sometimes through children. He can speak to you through nature. He can speak to you through circumstances that are happening around you. But most of the time that God speaks to you, it's going to be through his word, That's right. through the preaching of his word, and through his spirit that will speak to the very depths of your heart. Amen. And we need to be able to hear and to know God and his voice. The Bible says those that are his know his voice and they will follow him. And uh, so I would that all of us would be spiritually sensitive enough, sensitive enough today that we would be able to understand and know what God desires of us. Amen. I'm waiting, honestly, as a pastor, I'm waiting for, for some of our young people to step up and say, hey, I want to be used of God in the ministry. Amen. 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 I want you to hear the voice of God. I want you to know the voice of God, and I want you to know when he moves on you to worship, to praise, to dance, whatever it is that he moves on you to do, I want you to hear it, and I want you to have the courage to stand up and just do exactly what God desires of you. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you something today. God's going to place you in the company of people that need you to be a light and a witness to them. God's going to face people around you that if you keep your silence, somebody else is going to have to come and take your place and speak to those that God places you in the company of. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God today. Be aware of what God wants to speak to you about. Be aware of who He's speaking to you, to you about to go and, and minister to today. Amen. 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 If we are to be that sensitive to the Holy Ghost today, the Bible tells us this, and I know, most of some of you are here that have been here for a long time know that I love preaching on worship and praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'm still going to do it again today. Yeah. Amen. I feel like in our generation there seems to be a progression, or if you would, rather a regression to quietness. Yes. As if we would assume that quietness is reverence, mm. or quietness pleases God. There is times that it does please God when God is speaking to us. Right. But I'll tell you something. There's a whole lot of other times yes. that the Bible says we should praise right. Him for His wonderful yes. works. Yes. When the Bible says praise 
uh, painting today downstairs, and I can't remember if it was before service or between services. Pastor, I want you to hear this. And, uh, and so Jody says, well, just uh, you show Pastor what you've been practicing. And, uh, and so he's doing something. He says, no, not that, you know. And all of a sudden he yells, the, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Yeah. And uh, I thought, wow. Yeah. 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 Raise up a child in the way that he shall yeah. go and he will not depart from it. Amen. We need a generation of Christians who are not afraid to praise God. Yeah. We need a generation of, of children of God that are not afraid to bow their heads in the restaurant. Say, I'm going to pray over my meal. I'm going to ask God to bless it in Jesus' name. We need a generation that is not going to be ashamed of the Lord God who has given himself and was not ashamed to go for, to a cross for our sins and to be hung up there naked and to die up there so we can be free of our sins. He was not ashamed to do something. He did it because he saw you. And you want to know something? We need to have that same spirit inside of us. Amen. Just, I'm never going to be ashamed of what Jesus has done in my life. Right. I'm never going to be ashamed of the fact that he took my sins away. I'm never going to be ashamed of the fact that, that he has healed me so many times. I'm never going to be ashamed so I will sit in my seat and keep my silence. But I'm going to stand up and say, hey, he's my God. We're not going to worship Buddha. I'm not going to worship all these other gods that are that so many of you will worship. I'm worshiping Jesus right here. My voice will last. I can preach for a while. Amen. So many things will will try and hinder you right. in your worship. Right. Typically, when we come into service, there are certain ones that seem to always find that place where they can dance, where they can lift their hands, where they can shout, where they can speak in tongues. While some sit quietly and wonder why they don't feel that freedom to be able to do so. I would that all of us would be able to find that freedom in the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Amen. I would that all of us would be would be of the type like David, who, when he returned the ark to Jerusalem, could not last but six or seven steps before he would stop and offer up a sacrifice and begin to worship and praise God with everything that was inside of him. Yeah. I would that all of us would dance on with all of our might before the Lord, and I oftentimes wish I was younger. Yeah. Amen. Because I'd have more strength like Brother Robert up here and be able to go forever. Yeah, right. Find myself out of breath after a little while. <laughs> but there's so many things. Mostly the things that fight against us being able to worship God is us. Yeah. Right. Most of it's us. Yeah. We just get in the way of ourselves. Yeah. I remember somebody saying about Brother Pugh that uh, he used to get into a, his prayer room and, and with the church around and he'll begin to pray. He says, oh Lord, don't let, don't let J.T. Pugh get in the way of what you want to do today. Yeah. One of the greatest ministers that we've had in our generation of time that has preached the truth. And when he got in the prayer room with all of his congregation around him and them praying together, please don't let J.T. Pugh get in the way yeah. of God and what you want to do in this yeah. service today. Don't let Ron Nickel get in the way, Lord, of what you want to do in this service. God, I want you to heal today. God, I want you to touch and fill all of those in the sound of, within the sound of my voice with the Holy Ghost today. God, don't let me get in the way of what you want to do in this service. But let me yield myself to you so that you can move through me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We just get in the way. We just get in the way. So many things. So many things like pride just, just kind of hold us back and we don't want to look like fools. And yet so many times we see of those that wrote the scripture. And then those of us that become fools for Christ's sake, God is going to use. Yeah. The things that we consider foolish by worldly standards are sometimes the things that God considers to be the greatest things. Kneeling yeah. prayer, bowing over your meal, worshiping God and dance or running or whatever it is. God looks down and says, that's my boy. That's my girl. That's my child. God's not ashamed. He looks down and says, oh, I'm going to be proud of those ones. Yeah. Amen. 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 Scripture in Hebrews told us, I read it in, in the Message Bible. I 
downloaded it onto my Blackberry this morning, read it in the Message Bible, and it says, oh, God, can you just see that God is just so proud of these? Who have a different country in mind than the one they're living in. Yeah. Amen. A different thing than this world. Oh, can I just beseech all of you that you would let go of this world once and for all. That you would let go of its habits and, and, and things that hold you back and its customs and ways of living, of dressing, of acting, and of speaking. And you would just say, God, you define me. Don't let this world define me. Right. You define me by your word and by your spirit today. Amen. 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 But so many things about us just gets in the way. Hard feelings, offenses that we've had. Oftentimes we'll look at each other and think, well, goodness sakes, that person doesn't deserve to be dancing. That person doesn't deserve to be worshiping. Look how they've offended me. Let me tell you something. How many were here for that session of lessons on the Veda of Satan? Any time that you hold offense in your heart, you're taking the bait. Yeah, right. Amen. Any time that you feel like you've got to get even with somebody else, you've taken the bait. Right. Have you ever put some bait out for a rat or a mouse? Have you ever put some cheese or something out? You know what happens to that thing when you put the bait out? It dies. It dies there, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You want to know something? Satan has got this bait in front of you that says, oh, I'm going to hold offense in my heart because this person didn't treat me right. This person said the wrong thing. Brother Nichols preaching directly at me. Whatever it may be, I want you to know something. If you hold that in your heart, in your mind, you've taken the bait. Right. It'll keep you from worshiping God. Yeah. The Bible tells us that when Jesus met that woman at the well, that uh, he told her that the Father is seeking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And I tell you something, how many want to feel God's presence? Amen. Amen. Do we have an anonymous here today? Do you want to feel God's presence? Yeah. Worship him. Yeah. Yeah. Worship him. Because right now, God's spirit is searching for those that will just get over themselves and not to say, Lord, I just love you yeah. so very much. I want to serve you. I love you with all my heart, my soul, my strength. You want God's attention? You want to feel his presence? Worship the Lord today. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Feelings of inadequacy. And I mention this because oftentimes, now, now, can I just slow down here for a little bit so that so you get the gist of what I'm going to be saying right now? There are times that God moves in this congregation for us to repent, right. to examine ourselves, look at our lives, and get things right. We find at times like that we come to an altar, whether it's up front here or it's at our home or whether it's maybe in your pew, you might stop and you might pray and say, God, there's just so much wrong with me. Can you forgive me? Yeah. And we feel that forgiveness of God. Right. Amen. But there's a danger there as well because the enemy uses that very thing to convince us that we're not worthy of praising him or worshiping him. That's right. That's right. Amen. Now, can I tell you that as you mature in God, you're going to understand something about the enemy. He's lying all the time. And any time that you feel in your heart that you cannot worship God because you don't feel adequate, because you've still got a habit, because you still got something wrong in your life that you maybe need to get straightened out. You think, yeah. I'm just not good enough. Am I good enough to take communion? Am I good enough to worship God? Yeah, Brother Robert is. Yes, Sister Kelly is. Yes, Brother Hall is. Yes, this one is. But I'm not quite there yet. He's lying. You tell him he's a liar. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because you see, it's it's that very thing that that drives us to an altar right. to repent. That once we've repented, we should say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your blood that has washed me. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There should be a transition from repentance into worship and yeah. into praise because of a God whose mercy endures forever. Yeah. I watch people sometimes, and if I can convince everybody to put your cell phones away and, and just forget about all the rain and all the, all the other stuff, 
Put your children beside you, tell them to behave and get to worshiping God. Right. That the enemy is a, just a master of distraction. Yeah. Yeah. He wants your mind on anything else but Jesus Christ today. Right. He would have you think about where you're going for dinner, the football game on, that is on, or coming on very shortly, Brother Kevin. And uh, all of those, <laughs> I say that because Brother Kevin loves football. <laughs> the hockey game that may have be happening, whatever it may be, he'll have your mind, I wonder how they're doing right now. <laughs> have you ever thought about that, Brother Kevin? I don't know how that <laughs> I have. In the middle of service and worshiping God, all of a sudden I'll start thinking, I wonder what the Canucks are doing. <laughs> you got to know where that's coming from. Come on, let's be honest with each other. This is the time to worship God. We join ourselves together here so that we can be in one mind, in one accord. And let me tell you something. When we get that way, there is no limit to what God can do. Yeah. 
so it'll be a joy to you. You're going to find it whenever you say, Oh, Jesus, I just love you so very much. And you feel the Holy Ghost come and begin to fill you. And the Bible tells us that this is the rest. Whereby the weary shall rest. This is where you're going to gain your strength. This is where you're going to be renewed. This is where you're going to be able to stand up on your feet. You want to pray for enthusiasm and, and excitement in the Holy Ghost? That's where you're going to get it. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to find rest and, and you're going to find the strength that you need to continue on. And uh, the last thing that you're going to find, you're going to find revelation. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. John the Revelator said, and then we read the rest of the book of Revelation. And we go back to the Old Testament and we look at those Old Testaments. I was in the spirit and the Lord was well, yeah. God is going to reveal himself to us. Right. Amen. Did you know that your relationship with him is built upon revelation? Yeah. 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 That's right. Every relationship, whether it's John and Stephanie, myself and my wife, brothers, whatever it is, it's built on revelation. It's right. built on revealing ourselves, my true inner feelings, yeah. what, what I really like. She has to like that. She better after 39 <laughs> It, and same with Jesus. When we begin to build our relationship on revelation, but you're not going to get revelation just by sitting there listening to my sermon. You're going to get revelation whenever you get in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And God is going to, and you're going to be able to say along with John the Revelator, with Isaiah, with Ezekiel, with all of those in the Old Testament, while well, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And Jesus revealed himself to me in greater measure than I ever thought possible before. Yeah. And you know what? The enemy knows this. So everything that he can do to stop you from getting that revelation. You know what else it'll do for you? It'll help you to be established, not upon the words that your pastor is preaching, but upon something that God has put in your heart and your Amen. mind. And you will stand in the day when all the others may be falling. You will stand and you will live for him because it'll be your revelation, your experience, what God has done for you in your life. forever, but uh, these four things will help us that simplify our worship for us. The first one comes from that first passage of scripture I read to you in the book of Exodus, and it talks about when they, they came out of Egypt. Now, I want you to notice something. How many of you have... Here's your name. I'll go ahead and ask you. How many of you believe that Jesus Christ exists and he died for your sins? Amen. 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 Pretty, good, pretty good group here. Listen, if the enemy comes and tells you that that simple step is not good enough for you to praise and worship God, I want you to look at this. Here God sent Moses into Egypt to deliver his people. They, they came out of Egypt after this long process of all those plagues and diseases that touched them. And finally they crossed over in the Red Sea. The enemy came in after them. God loved the Red Sea pulled up and the enemy's dead. Now, look at what they did. They began to praise and worship God. Moses began to just sing a song unto God. But hold it a minute. They still got 40 years in front of them before they're ever going to get into the promised land. They still got times when they're going to be without water and they're going to whine and complain about it. There's going to be times when they're going to complain about the manna that God gave them. And they're going to go through all these trials. They're going to go through warfare and passing through people's lands that didn't want them to pass through it. And they're going to go through all of that stuff. And all of that stuff is in their future. They have not arrived. All they've done is made one small step. Yeah. So the first principle in the simplicity of worship is understanding something. I am not where I used to be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. behind them, and 
then they began with timbrels and with dances. They began to sing songs and they began to praise and worship God, but they're only one small step out of Egypt. If you made just one step away from what you were and you said, I believe that Jesus died for my sins, just one small step. You can worship him today and thank him. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a slave in Egypt anymore. I'm not a part of this world anymore. But oh, my Jesus has revealed something to me that I can be free. I don't have to feel the pain or the hurt of the lashes and the whips that the enemy would, would cause to come upon me. But I am just on the other side of this red sea. And the enemy is not going to touch me, at least for a little bit. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm not where I used to be. The place they were before was a place of defeat. The place they're at now is a place of victory. You say, well, they've still got defeats coming up. Yeah, but for now, it's a place of victory. Amen. And it's the place where God has brought them to. Yeah, they've got lots more battles to go through. So the first principle, I'm not where I used to be. Amen. Amen. Second one. I just lost my mind. <laughs> That's all right, we've got lots of it. Um, work fine. Everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. No. Second principle is that knowing is that I'm not what I used to be. Yeah. Right. This one's not very loud either. There you go. Turn me up. I'm not what I used to be. The Bible tells us in the New Testament that Paul says, I am a new creation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Old things have passed away, but old, all things have become new. Yeah. If we look in the New Testament and we look at all of those that came to Jesus, and the Bible says that it would, it, or the, the Bible says in the Message Bible, it was as if they came and threw them at his feet. So here I've got a blind son, and I'm going to come and place him at Jesus' feet. And he reaches out and he touches him. And he sees. Yeah. And another person comes up and, and being carried by two other men because he can't walk. Yeah. Place him down at Jesus' feet. And Jesus touches them. And strength comes to their legs. And, yeah. and they begin to get up and they begin to walk. And maybe they hobble a little bit at first, but after a while the strength is coming. And, and they begin to run and dance and shout. Yeah. And they're on the hillside. And somebody else comes and they haven't been able to hear. And others come. And, and my goodness, those that haven't been able to see, they're looking around. They're looking at blue. Yeah. They're looking at green and red. Yeah. And everything that God has made. And, uh, and they're just, they're not what they used to be. Yeah, right, right. I used to be the blind. Yeah, right. But now I see. Oh, thank you, I used to not be able to hear God speaking, but, yeah. but now I hear. Yeah. You should not be able to even even walk spiritually, but look at me now. Yeah. I'm not what I used to be. I used to be not clean as those lepers that were brought to me. Now I'm clean again. Because I'm not what I used to be. I may not be all that I'm going to be, but I'm not what I used to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the enemy will say, well, that's not good enough to worship God. And I'm telling you today, it is good enough. Number three, it's knowing and remembering that what I am right now is not the end product. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, God. The, Bible says, the Bible says this, that when I see him, Brother Cole, when I see him, I'm going to be like him, for I will, I will see him as he is. I am going, well, I want to desire, I want to be like Jesus. But my desire is I want to be like Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I want to be able to show him in my spirit, my attitude, my life, the way that I live my life. I want to be like him. And you know what? Temptation is, is that I would compare myself with Brother Terry and say, um, that I'm not quite as good as I need to be because I'm not like Brother Terry or Brother Hall or somebody. Come on now. We all do this. But the comparison that we're going to make here today is that the ideal that we have before us is not somebody else. It's not the pastor. It's not the assistant pastor. It's not your youth leader. It is Jesus that is the ideal. And one day, listen, you get 
so in, oh, you get so impatient with yourself as to why God won't deal with you and change you quicker. Isn't it true? But I want you to know God looks at things in the long term. And you know what? God's not discouraged by your life. He saw it before he called you. And he can work patiently and carefully in your life to help you. That he that began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He's not finished with me yet. I'm going to be better tomorrow than I am today. Yeah. I'm going to be a little bit more like Jesus a week from now than I am today. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The Bible says, when I see him, I shall be like him. It tells us this. It says that this corruptible put shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. Oh, I'm looking forward. To, in, to that place where corruption can't touch you. Yeah. I don't know what corruption is. Yeah. Anything that makes you rot. Yeah. Anything that makes you rot spiritually. Yeah. Whatever sins, listen, yeah. one day, all those weaknesses that yeah. I cry out to God, God, you have made me more like you. God, you've got to help me to be more like you. Yeah. All of those things, all of those things are not going to be a part of my life anymore yeah. because I'm going to be like Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus did not sin. The last one is, it's knowing that my final destination is not what it used to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 What was it Teresa said in this morning's Bible study? Nobody wants to talk about hell anymore. Right. You can go to church after church after church and everybody's going to preach you a gospel of Affluence, yeah. ease, we're all okay, I'm okay, you're okay, everybody's okay, yeah. nobody's, nobody's a sinner. Right. The Bible says that narrow is the gate. Few there be that are going to find it. My destination for my life is not a place of destruction, it's not a place of punishment, but it is going to be a place of reward. Amen. So, Amen. Thank you, Lord. You, all those four principles, all of those things, if we can remember those four principles, every one of us have a reason to worship God today. Let's stand together, shall we? My wife will come. Revelation 21, chapter, or verse 2, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, and it goes on to say that in this city there's going to be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. I am so aware today when I look at this world that we live in and I read the news and see the things that are going on that I don't want this world to be so attractive to me that I don't see heaven in front of me. In the Message Bible of that last passage I read to you in Hebrews, it says that they looked ahead and saw that city and they acknowledged it by greeting it. That's my city. Jesus has prepared a place for me. This is just a temporary dwelling place. When you look at eternity, I want you to know today that our 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, however long that we're here in this world, is going to be just such a minute portion of our, the totality of our lives that we ought to look at the last part rather than the first part. We ought to be attracted to the last part rather than the first part. We ought to rejoice about the last part rather than, than what's here and the problems that we have down here. And if we do so, I'll tell you, we're always going to have a time and a place and an attitude and a spirit of worship. Worship simplified is knowing these four principles and then understanding something because all of the word of God points to one person. Amen. It points to Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Jesus is the one that made it possible for me not to be what I was before. Amen. Right. To not to be where I was before. 
Jesus made it possible for me to know that what I am right now is not the finished product. That where I am right now is not the end of my destination. Jesus made it possible. He went to a cross for my sins. He's the one that gave me the promises. He's the one that said, I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you can be awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like us to do something if we could at the end of this service. I can't force you to do this, but let's just take about two minutes right now. And you just tell God that you're sorry for all the things that may have put you have made put in the way between him and you. And at the end of those two minutes, let's just turn our attention and our heads upwards. Lift up our hands and begin to worship Him. Hallelujah. Let's take a few moments and just tell God, Lord, you know me today. Lord, you know my life. You know my thoughts. You know my desires. You know my heart. Lord, I'm sorry for all of those things that have, Lord, that I failed you in. I have missed the mark. Whether it's for treating somebody poorly, whether it's just because of an attitude that I've had. God, if it's been something that has disappointed you about my life, I'm so sorry, Lord, that I, I messed up today. Jesus, we all come together here in this congregation right now. And we come to the foot of the cross. And we stand together. Not one of us is any better than the person behind us, in front of us, around us. We're all just sinners, Lord, and we come to you for cleansing. Let your blood wash over us right now. Lord, let it cleanse every sinful thought, every sinful action, every sinful desire. Just let it cleanse it. Let us be white as snow here today. In Jesus' name, we call upon that name in repentance today, Lord, that you would wash us and make us clean. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're ready, why don't you just lift up your hands, lift up your hands, and begin to worship the one that made it all possible for you to be cleansed right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 